Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. And in this video, we are going to see how you can create new ledgers and enter their opening balances if you're starting a new company in QuickBooks. So without wasting any time, let's get started with this video. Now, after creating the company, the next step is we will understand about the interface of the QuickBooks and at the same time, we will enter some ledgers. So here we are on the home screen. QuickBooks has the simplest interface, which a layman can even understand. You don't need to be a, an accountant to understand the QuickBooks interface. It's that simple. So on the top, you have the vendor section, although we can't see all of the options right now because we need to enable some of the features that I'll show you in future. So uh, we have the vendor section on the top. We have the customer section here. We have the employee section, company section and banking section. So there are five different sections and it's the same for all the versions. So even if you're not using QuickBooks 2024 in your organizations, the QuickBooks 2016, 2018 all have the same options. And what these lines are indicating that indicates the flow of the company operations. So for example, first you enter bills and then pay for bills. And also when you purchase the item from the vendors, only then you can sell it to customers and then you receive the payment and then you uh, record the deposits in the bank account. So it's showing the order flow of the accounting. So this is all about the home page. Right now, we don't need to make any changes or enable anything because to make things crystal clear, we will just follow our assignment. Whatever is in assignment, we will follow that flow only because this is the practical example. Let's suppose that this company has implemented or is planning to implement QuickBooks. And like I said, it's not possible to transfer all of the records from last 10 years to QuickBooks. Rather, you will close the account manually as a closing trial balance and then ma make an opening trial balance or make an opening balances of each ledger and then place it in QuickBooks. So our client has done the same. It has compiled for us the opening balances as of January 1st, 2024. So these are all of the ledgers. So let's enter and we will start entering not from here. We will directly start it from here. Now you might be asking why? Because receivable is also an account and it's 150,000. Sure. But all the receivable vendors and inventory is the total balances of all the customers. So whenever we enter the customers, like we enter here, we have three customers, right? So the balances, if we compile all of these or enter the individual balances of customers, it will automatically update the control accounts. So this balance will automatically be updated, right? Same goes for vendors and stock. So let's enter from here. Land and buildings. This is fixed asset. Now it says land and building here, but now the rules have changed. You cannot enter the land and buildings together because each of them has separate depreciation rules. So just for the sake of example, let's copy this and I'll go to the chart of accounts. And like I said, we have created a product based business, right? That's why we have a lot of accounts here and that's good for us. We can simply change the name of any. So for example, if we don't want furniture, uh, let's say we have furniture or not. No, we don't have furniture. So what we can do is either use this one, just simply right click and click on edit account. And then you can just simply change the name and put the balances. But if you want to create a new account, you have to go to this bottom area where it says, account, you will click on this drop down and it will show you these options. Do you want to create a new account, edit account, delete account? And you also can see the short keys here. So let's say I want to use it on short keys. So I'll press control N here. And here is the area for the account creation or ledger creation. So here we have different categories and QuickBooks guides you very well in these categories. For example, I want to create a fixed asset account, but I don't know what we can enter in fixed asset. 
So whenever I click on fixed asset, it will show you the complete description of it. That what is fixed asset tracks the value of significant items that have a useful life of more than one year, such as building, land, machinery and equipment and vehicles. So even though if a person is not an accountant and he is asked to create a ledger, he can easily do that. And same goes for all the other things, what we can create in bank, what we can create in other current assets, especially the people have confusion in other current assets and other assets. So it will show you what can be entered in the current assets and what can be entered in the other assets. So it's very cool. Okay, let's continue. Let's select the first ledger and continue. And here is the name of our asset and this is land and buildings. Let's copy and paste this. You can write the detailed description about it and you can also create some categories. We will see that in future. So let's say land and buildings at cost, at cost or whatever. You can put additional notes. You can map the, the text line mapping. We will see this options later. The taxation op options, we will explore it later. So I'll click on the enter opening balances. And the first balance is of 850,000. I'll just copy and paste it from here. And let's write 1st of January, 2024. Now it's very easy. I'll write here 0101 and it will automatically pick 2024 if you are in 2024. Otherwise you can put it 0101, 24 or 25, whatever. So press tab, click OK, and then save and new. Now it says this transaction is more than 90 days in the past. Obviously right now we are in the 24th May 2024, right? So it's a balance of the past. It's just indicating that is it a mistake or you are intentionally doing it. So if we are intentionally doing it, we will click yes, but we can also disable this option so that it won't disturb us in future. So let's click yes. And let's see how you can disable this. I'll go to the edit and preferences and I'll go to accounting and click on company preferences. And here you can disable this date warnings. Warn if the transactions are 90 days in the past, no. Warn if transactions are 30 days in the past, no. 30 days in the future. All right, now let's continue our working. Our first asset is entered. Now the second one is the accumulated depreciation of land and buildings. Now the accumulated depreciation of land and building is a negative asset. It's a reduction in asset. Now you might be thinking that depreciation is an expense. Obviously it is an expense, but the entry of depreciation is according to the international accounting standards is depreciation you charge as, a, as an expense and in return you reduce the asset. So before it was used to be the same account which with which you will credit the asset, but now you will record a fixed asset nature, but with the negative balance. If you have some confusion about these rules, what you can do is just write the standard treatment of accumulated depreciation of land and buildings and you will get the complete article on it. So this is a contra asset. Okay, let's copy this and let's again create a new account. Control N, fixed asset, continue. And here we will paste this. And since it is a negative balance, entering opening balance, I'll click on entering opening balance. And since by default, the asset nature is positive, but we have to record it on the credit side, on the other side. So that's why we need to not only put the balance, but also put a minus sign with it because it's opposite in nature. And it's of 1st of January, 2024. 1st of January, 2024. Everything looks good. Save and close. Or we can click on save and new because we have to create some more ledgers. Similarly, motor vehicles, let's copy and paste here. You can put the description and entering opening balances. Let's copy and paste this balance. 1st of January 2024 and click OK. Save and new and accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles. Let's copy and paste. But if you're not able to copy and paste, you can write it manually here. And it's of also of 1st of January 2024. Now I'll just fast forward the process and enter two more machinery. 290,000, 1st of January, click OK, save and new. 
accumulated depreciation of machinery enter opening balances 58,000 1st of January 2024 now we need to put a minus sign right click OK and save and new uh, now I'll also show you if you made any mistake how you can correct this but that you can find in the next video in this video we will just quickly enter all the ledgers and their balances now the next one we have cash now where we can enter cash we will enter it in the bank because the nature of cash and bank is the same and that is liquid asset if you're not sure about it you can again go to new area and you can select the bank it will tell you here that bank account nature is used for petty cash checking account saving account money markets and more so let's click here continue and i'll write here cash put the balance and the balance is this and 1st of january 2024 click ok and save and new now the next one is standard chartered bank so this is the balance enter opening balances put it here 1st of january click ok save and new next one is an other bank let's quickly enter this and we are done click ok save and new now the next one is the capital invested but we will not enter this balances this is not actually the capital invested only this is the net owners equity so this is 48000 but we will not enter this balances why because there is an accounting equation which says asset is equal to capital plus liabilities that means if you turn the equation to the other way it should mean that equity is equal to asset minus liabilities that means if we enter the asset and we minus it from the liabilities it should automatically calculate the net owners equity and that's exactly what we are doing here when you enter the opening balances you don't enter the income and expenses because that's already finalized in the profit and loss account and included in the balance sheet as a capital or retained earnings right so only the opening balance consists of asset liabilities and capital so capital is equal to asset minus liabilities so this should be the net balance automatically when we enter all of this it should come automatically so let's leave it right here now the next one we have is accrued expenses and it says it's expenses but this accrued expenses is actually a liability now what is the accrued expenses if you don't know so accrued expenses is basically if the company has incurred any expense that is due in this particular but month but haven't been paid yet so for example your salaries if you're in the month of let's say march so company hasn't paid you salary yet but they have to record the expense in that particular month so how we, they will record it obviously they will record it as a salary expense debit and since they haven't paid anything yet but it's due so they will credit the liabilities or accrued expenses and whenever on the next month say you get the salary by fifth of next month so on the next month they will debit or reverse the accrued expenses with the same amount and then credit cash so the accrued expense area is used when you want to record the expense or income in that particular month even if you haven't paid or received the cash if you want to research more on it you can search for some articles and you will get the complete understanding of it so i'll choose the other current liabilities from here actually let's see what category is suitable for us so let's choose the other current liabilities first so it says sales tax security deposits these are other current liabilities so no it's not suitable now let's see the suitable category for it accounts payable just consider that accounts payable is only used for vendors with which you are buying goods that you sell so it's not suitable other current liabilities that could be suitable because this is a current liability it will be cleared immediately in the next month it's not a long-term liability so this is perfect other current liabilities let's write copy and paste accrued expenses put the balances here 68539 now the ideal way of selecting the balance if you're using the PDF form I'm using it by default on edge browser so what you will do is just double click here and it will only select the balance like this just double click once if you try to select like this it will not select it properly just double click anywhere you want to copy so the balances of 1st of January 2024 let's click OK 
and click on save and close because we are done with all of these balances save and close now only these balances are remaining 150000 for debtors 350000 for creditors and 900000 for stock and at the end this balance should automatically be updated so that's it guys now i recommend you to stop at this point do and follow the assignment and follow each single step enter all the balances one by one just take the printout of this and follow it one by one only then you can gain the complete understanding of this software so enter all the balances up to this point and then i'll see you in the next one